Hey, it's Jason. Now, you'd think as a tech enthusiast and as someone who's been making tech videos on YouTube for many years now that I'd be using all the latest devices, especially ones that I use and rely on almost every day. But what if I were to tell you that the iPad that I use all the time and has really become one of my most important pieces of tech that I use is from 2018? That would make this the oldest Apple device that I have and also one that I intentionally chose not to upgrade despite many new models that have been released. And yes, that includes taking a pass on the very recently launched M4 iPad Pro that has the much coveted OLED display and an impossibly thin form factor, no doubt features that makes an upgrade feel enticing, but ultimately something I feel that is wholly unnecessary and here's why. Well, let me start by going over the specific iPad that I have. This is a 2018 12.9 inch iPad Pro. This was the first year Apple did a pretty significant design overall to the iPad as a whole, making the tablet look and feel a lot more modern than it did previously. And one of the reasons why I've been uninterested in upgrading to the newer models is that over the past six years, the form factor really hasn't changed that much at all. This transition to the flat frame that's completely squared off with the front and back of the iPad ushered in this now popular industrial look that is shared across many modern devices and is still the primary design foundation even for the newest iPad Pros. And though this is six years old, and to be honest, I'm not exactly careful with this thing when I'm using it, it still looks in phenomenal shape. I don't have any dents or bending on the body. I still think that this space gray colorway looks sick and it totally maintains a modern aesthetic in 2024 and it's still super easy to carry around and take with you on the go. Plus, this was the first time Apple implemented the new smart connector and magnets on the back in order to connect to accessories like the Magic Keyboard and completely change the way the iPad could be used. And even though there is a new version of the Magic Keyboard, it's super similar to this old one that I have here and it still works perfectly. Now, yes, I understand that the newer model is slightly lighter and thinner and has a space black colorway, which no doubt would all be nice to have, but I think it's fair to say that from a design perspective, the new iPad Pro still utilized the blueprint that was introduced back in 2018. So this six-year-old iPad still has a form factor that looks and feels ultra premium today. And another reason why the 2018 iPad Pro is still super usable today is that it's still supported with a ton of new accessories that takes the user experience to the next level, much like the ones from our channel sponsor, ESR. ESR is a leading brand when it comes to accessories for the iPad, and one of the best things that you could do to keep your iPad safe and lasting a long time is using ESR's Armorite screen protector. Not only does this glad exceed military-grade protection, it's seriously the easiest thing to install. Just clean your screen with the included cleaning material and then place the included housing over the iPad's display, then remove the bottom protective film and slide your finger down the screen and then remove the protective film on top and bam, you're all done. No bubbles, no misalignments, seriously the easiest thing ever. Plus, ESR has this shift magnetic case for the iPad Pro that is really well designed and won a Red Dot Award in 2023. It's divided into two pieces and when connected to the outer case, you can achieve up to nine different ultra stable angles to best support what it is you're doing with the iPad. There are six magnetic grooves that you can confidently lock your iPad in position to and you have multiple angles for when you're doing something like watching a video and multiple positions for when you're doing something like writing or drawing. And in case you don't want to spend a small fortune on the Apple Pencil, ESR has you covered with their Digital Pencil Pro. It's got the same precision and smoothness when you're writing or drawing. It works out of the box with no pairing necessary. And best of all, it can connect and recharge the same way the Apple Pencil does wirelessly by magnetically connecting it here. When combined together, these accessories can take even a six-year-old iPad's user experience to the next level while also keeping it safe and protected. If you guys want to learn more about ESR accessories for the iPad, check out the links in the description below. Get the protection and functionality that you deserve. Check out ESR today. Okay, so the 2018 iPad Pro from a looks and design perspective still comfortably checks the box today, but let's talk about if the six-year-old hardware inside does as well. This version of the iPad is powered by the A12 Bionic chip, a powerful but dated mobile processor made by Apple. And look, I'm just gonna be honest, as good as the A12 is from a performance standpoint, it absolutely pales in comparison to any of Apple's professional M-level chips that the newer iPads use today. Now that can sound a bit discouraging, but here's my take on it. Rather than thinking that my 2018 iPad Pro is underpowered, I feel as though that the newer iPads are gratuitously overpowered. The bottom line is this, the vast majority of people who have an 
iPad, use it for content consumption as it's a fantastic device for watching videos, reading and playing games. It's also wonderful for basic document creation like writing Word docs or writing slash replying to emails, especially with the Magic Keyboard or Apple Pencil. I personally use my iPad for writing my scripts for my videos and sometimes making thumbnails. And here's the thing, the A12 Bionic, despite its age, can still handedly manage all of these activities like it's a walk in the park. I haven't experienced any slowdown whatsoever in the past six years. And given my use case, I'm not even sure I'd notice a difference if you swap my iPad out for a new one. Now, before some of you go for my throw in the comments, yes, I understand that because my iPad is as old as it is, I won't have access to things like the new Final Cut Pro for iPad, or I wouldn't be able to really handle more spec intensive photo editing or doing something like 3D animation. And yes, I would say for the very small population of folks who solely rely on iPad for more demanding content creation, this six-year-old iPad Pro just ain't gonna cut it. I mean, you can't even download Final Cut Pro on the App Store with this thing. But here's my observation. I find that most content creators, much like myself, we usually have a dedicated computer to do our work. And even though the capability to do some of that work on the iPad does sound appealing, it usually comes with some level of limitations at best. I mean, it would be a good backup to have in a pinch, but it would definitely not be my first choice to go with as my main content creating machine. Now, I also recognize that the newest iPad Pros come with the much requested OLED panel, which is dope. And I am a little bit jealous over, I'm not gonna lie. But I gotta say my 2018 version is still great. It's a liquid retina display. So the colors are really accurate and though it won't be as bright as the newer models, it still more than gets the job done, especially because it's equipped with Apple ProMotion, which I personally value more than the improved screen hardware. And of course the cameras are better on the new iPads as well. Again, something that doesn't matter too much to me as I'm not really using my iPad to take photos really. And the battery life on this thing is still rock solid. I'm getting around seven hours of use on a full charge, which is pretty fantastic after six years of continual use. And that brings me to the last reason why I'm still using a 2018 iPad in 2024. And that's because how expensive the new iPads have become. For context, the new 11 inch iPad Pro starts at a pretty wallet crunching $999, while the 13 inch model starts at a staggering $1,299. That's a crazy amount of money for a tablet that again, I recognize is highly capable and without question the best tablet in the world. But to me, it's ultimately a device that is seemingly stacked with performance potential that it either can't use because of the limitations of the medium or only utilized by a tiny fraction of the iPad user base. I ultimately feel as though I'll get the same level of utility and enjoyment out of this six-year-old tablet than I would with the newest model. And though the day will eventually come where I'll need to upgrade, it doesn't look like that day is anytime soon. But hey, that's just me and I wanna know what you guys think. Do you think I'm nuts to think that a 2018 iPad is still totally usable today? Or do you think I'm just a broke Apple fanboy who can't afford the new ones? Curious to get your thoughts, let me know what you guys are thinking in the comments down below. And in case you guys missed my long-term reviews of the iPhone 15 and the 15 Pro, check them out here. They're gonna help you be as informed as possible.